Hey guys, this is my full cat. 375FC from Siegel. This is my full cat modified to my specs. I'm going to go through everything and during this I'm going to show you clips of this and actually in performance for the attribute that I'm showing from the motor to the deck to the trolling motor to the seats, everything. I want to kind of go over in depth some of the mods that can be done to make this boat great versus the stock version. The stock version is fine too, but just for the purpose of this video. We're going to go over those and we're going to compare this boat to the Seagull Stealth, to the Seagull Stealth, the 124SMB and the Seagull 8 and Seagull 9. Those are the other motor mount boats put out by Seagull that people use for fishing and I want to tell you why this one is absolutely superior to all of those. Um, but first let's start from front to back, the motor. This is a Mercury 4 horsepower outboard motor, 4 stroke. You're not supposed to get a 4 horsepower motor because it's a little heavier and the actual power that it puts on. It's a little bit too strong for the stock transom. So what happens, you get rid of the stock transom, you make your own transom, one that's actually worth the crap, okay? This one is fantastic. I took the original brackets and then I bought some other brackets from Lowe's, stiffened this other thing up, and this thing doesn't really like to move at all. Okay, it's on there. But here's the added suspect, um, there's the added subject that, you know, this slat will flex Right here. Now, granted, this is the same design that's on the 440 FC, and the 440 FC could take a four horsepower motor. So what I did, I mean, just for security, I put beams, stabilizing beams, that mount all the way from the middle slat all the way down here, connecting to the big bracket. And what this does is this applies stress from this slat across all of them. So this slat's just not taking all the beating from the motor. The motor, I mean, it's actually these are kind of taking the burden. And so the end result is this thing doesn't even flex. Fantastic. I have one over here, one over here. Um, I have more slats than usual. I put four more slats. This originally came with five slats. I have four because I wanted a full deck, but I still wanted it to have the versatility of, of what the slats offered. What the slats offer is a completely water-free boat. Okay, If water flashes on top of your boat for whatever reason, some jerk sped by you and made a bunch of wake, it just literally falls onto the rubber floor and drains right out. You stay completely dry. But there are too few slats for me to walk around. I like to walk around all over this boat. And so I originally had a wooden deck. And that thing worked pretty good. But, I mean, it didn't have the, you know, it was a little heavier. It made the boat a little heavier than I like. It was hard to take apart. And um, it didn't have the versatility of these slats. So this is a pretty good idea. I know a lot of people putting out wooden decks. But a lot of people haven't thought about just putting on more slats. More slats is the way to go. Take it from somebody who's done both. Second of all, 14-inch pedestals. A must-have. They give you 7-inch pedestals, but there's really no point. This boat's so stable. It's like stable. It's an 18-foot huge bass boat. I'm sorry. It's super, super stable, this boat is. And that's because of the pontoons and the buoyancy and the water displacement combined, okay? So why even have such a small pedestal unless you're like a short person? The advantage to having these, you can stick your tackle boxes right underneath here and you can do it all the way around. You can literally sit on all your gear. I have like two tackle bags, my battery, a cooler, and I just store it right around my seat. And then I take this seat off and I just use this like a full deck for like a full bass boat. If I were to buy a big bass boat, it would just be to use the whole deck and use a bow mount trolling motor. Okay, and then I just have the rest of that big boat swinging around the lake for what, right? Why do that if I can have a boat that's just as stable and, you know, a lot smaller, a lot more versatile? <laughs> Moving on, speaking about trolling motors, Main Coder Traxxas is the way to go for this boat. Guys, how's it going? Right it's absolutely the best trolling motor I have ever used. And if you flip out the front screw to turn it around, and create a bow mount trolling motor. Um, it's absolutely versatile. Like it just, it has a 42 inch, I have a 42 inch shaft, drops down to the water. I just arc the tiller up, because this tiller, you know, goes back and forth. It's in storage position right now, by the way, that's a safe mode. It can accidentally actuate once it's in safe mode, which is great. You can't, you know, don't accidentally kick it off. But absolute control, absolute control. Wouldn't have it any other way, hands down the best way to run this boat from a bow mount trolling motor is this way. You can get any kind of fish finder you want and uh, Seagull makes universal sounders so you can mount any fish finder you want and all I have to do is take a rod to and attach it to the transom or command station whatever you want to call it and have it down there just like this is and put the transducer on the bottom. Now just how it happens that the Seagull I mean this Hummingbird 140C fishing buddy just does it all which is why I have it. It's a standalone unit 
but um, any any fish finder is able to be mounted on this. The casting bar is fantastic. I would say it's a must-have. If you get a boat like this and you don't get a casting bar, I don't, you, you know, it's you're just missing out. It's like having the peanut butter without the jelly. I swear. Uh, the gentleman who I bought this from had made uh, alter alterations to this. He put rod holders in here, um, some for holding the net, some for holding these uh, umbrellas. He put umbrellas on these seats to um, allow you to cast and still have shade because in the bimini tops you can't do that. There's strings everywhere. Fantastic mod by that guy. Thank you. Um, the rod holders are fine. They do their job. They hold my rods. That's all I want them for. Um, I do have these. These I actually troll with. These are actually sturdy. They're not made of cheap little plastic like the ones they give you. And these are true quick release. So I actually fish with these all the time. And I store stuff randomly. And I actually hang my net off on this one side while I fish off the other. That way all I have to do when I do catch a fish, I reach back and I grab my net and I pull it off. And um, I mount and I land my fish. It's done quite, quite quickly. Um, battery box back here. With a trickle charger that I have running through here, it all works really nicely. I've got all my emergency gear in there. I might actually add another one on that side. I haven't decided what I want to do with that side. But overall, the boat is fantastic. In comparison to this boat, it's a 12 and a half foot boat. 12, 12, six inches, 12 foot 6 inches, something. It is as stable as it can get for this boat. Like It's seriously, literally, super stable. Super, super stable. I had my entire family on here once. I had my wife, myself, my two kids, and we all just fished off the side. We all fished all over this thing, and uh, we all stood up on it. We weren't scared to death. It was crazy, okay? Um, I also, when myself and my son are fishing, we're fishing off the edge. We're standing right on the edge of this boat. Right on the edge, okay? Fishing off. The boat doesn't even move, okay? Now, tell me what other kind of 12-foot boat you can do that with. There isn't one, unless it's an inflatable. We'll get into that later. But just so you know, I'm not trying to doubt you guys are John Boats, but I do have John Boats. I have a 14-footer back there, okay? I really do like the versatility that these boats had, which is why I had them, because they're flat bottoms. They can get right into the weeds, and you don't have any issues. You know, they, they're pretty versatile. But the bad thing is, they only rely on water displacement, and therefore, they're extremely unstable. So, I mean, the best thing you can do is just sit down in your seat, and hope you know nothing rocks you too much, or hope your buddy back there fishing doesn't displace the boat and make you fall off. <laughs> Absolutely not an issue with this boat. It's like night and day, I swear. Night, day. That is the advantage of this boat. Quite, I mean, I can't stress it enough. The size, I mean, the strength to size ratio of this boat is superior to everything else out there in terms of fishing ability. And that even goes for Seagull's other boats. Now, Seagull's other boats, they're motor mount boats and they're a new Seagull style, which is pretty much a modified motor mount boat accommodated to do what the full cat does. Those are pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. They both, they have both, um, you know, the, the factor of water displacement and buoyancy. They're extremely hard to sink. They're extremely stable. My only thing was it, they don't have a full deck. You actually sit inside the boat like you sit in there. That means you're subject to water splashing inside of your boat. You needing a bilge pump to get it out. You being wet, and I hate it. You also don't have the versatility of storing your gear everywhere like this one. Okay, you just don't. I can store my gear everywhere on the very absolute edge, and it's still out of the way. And you can't do that. I mean, the pontoons are there instead of underneath. And that's what separates this boat from the others, and that's what I feel makes this boat um, superior to the others still, no matter what. Um, I'm still wondering why Seagull hasn't put out a full deck for this boat. I'm guessing the reason why is because if they did, nobody else would buy any of their other boats. But, um, fantastic boat. I hope this video was helpful to you. Send me questions. Send me whatever you want. Um, hope you enjoyed this overview. Thank you.